Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for a happy new year next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building the man with the bag, Santa Claus, and even more importantly, his noblest of steeds, Rudolph. Of course, you're only allowed to watch this video if you've been good this year. Every time you make me put True Strike on a video, you get another lump of coal in your stocking. We'll start off with the big man since he is the boss after all. Actually, that's our first goal, getting tiny assistants who will help us make tiny toys. Next, we need a giant bag to hold enough toys for the children of the world. Finally, we need to find a way to slide down a chimney without getting stuck and roasted. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one, that's really the jolly stat. Wisdom next, you need to guide the reindeer with some animal handling, even if they're actually fully sentient creatures with culture and personality. Dexterity after that, despite your hefty build, you're never caught dropping off presents. Follow that up with intelligence you need a bit of it to craft your toys. Constitution's a bit low, I don't want to dump it because you're pretty acclimated to cold weather, and we'll dump strength. It might seem like you lift a giant sack full of toys, but it's definitely a little bit magical. Santa is a human, or at least he was, until he became a mystical figure of magical wonder. For that, we'll grab the telepathic feat, so you can get plus one to your charisma, communicate telepathically with creatures within 60 feet of you, and cast detect thoughts once per long rest with your charisma modifier. That'll let you read surface level thoughts, or deeper thoughts, if the creature you're targeting fails a wisdom saving throw. I I can't think of a better way to know if someone's been naughty or nice. Bump your dexterity and wisdom with your two free points, take stealth for your skill of choice, and the guild artisan background for insight and persuasion. Call yourself King Toymaker. You really are the best after all. We'll kick things off as an artificer, even though we don't have the intelligence for multi-classing just yet, letting you choose two skills from the artificer list, like sleight of hand and arcana, to make magical toys and sneak them under a kid's pillow, like your dental pixie compatriot. You're also a magical tinkerer, letting you put tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical toys, little lights messages, puffs of smoke, or tiny music, so you can jack that box up. Prestidigitation does similar things, making smells, heating up cocoa, making tiny objects that fit in your hand. Mending puts two pieces of something back together, or fixes a crack in something in case something breaks on one of your toys. No worries, you're a pretty chill boss. For his level spells, Long Strider will get your reindeer running faster, adding 10 feet to a creature's movement speed. Featherfall will be a nice backup if they accidentally drop you, letting you and up to five falling creatures avoid falling damage as a reaction. Second level artificers get infusions, special toys that are so good you keep them for yourself. A bag of holding is just a normal sized bag that always weighs 15 pounds but can hold up to 500 pounds or 64 cubic feet, whichever happens first. If any of y'all want to fact check how many toys could fit in that bag, that's fair. When playing Santa Claus in Dungeons and Dragons, nitpicking volume measurements is the main draw for me. Homunculus Servant makes you a tiny sized servant who can complete tasks for you or fight but fighting isn't getting you on the nice list. A rope of climbing will move one end of itself towards another end, it's kind of weird but it could help you get up chimneys. Finally, Enhanced Weapon makes a weapon magical and adds one to the attack and damage rolls, useful for when you meet four siblings on their way to fight an evil ice hag. I personally think that more stories should have Santa Claus show up with weapons for the main characters. Imagine the Great Gatsby if Nick Carraway was packing heat. Third level artificers get to choose a specialty. Battlesmiths are great at violence, but also they're good at building things to pull a sleigh with smith's tools proficiencies. Use those to make a steel defender, which is a medium-sized creature that has stats in Tasha's or the Eberron book. It takes a while for me to explain it, but this is perfect for Donna. Donner is, of course, the cyborg reindeer. You're also battle ready, letting you use your intelligence modifier for attacks with magical weapons. That's the violent part, but I just wanted a ride. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement, and you know artificers use their dexterity modifier the most, right? At least they do when they commit several acts of breaking and entering in a single night. Fifth level battlesmiths can murder better with extra attack to attack twice instead of once with your action, but that's not what we need. We need enlarge reduce to make a creature one size larger and give them advantage on strength checks and saves, and an extra d4 of damage to their attacks with weapons, use it on your robot animal so it can be mounted, or pull the sleigh much more effectively, or use reduce on yourself to shrink in size to suit your mood, and get disadvantage on strength checks and saves, a d4 penalty to your attacks with weapons, that'll help you slide down chimneys though, not murder. Murder is for the naughty list, and for people on the naughty list. Levitate lifts a creature into the air, and you can move them 20 feet per turn with your action. Put it on a reindeer, and it can fly, kind of. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus to skill checks 
you make with the tools you're proficient with. The elves make most of the toys, but you gotta show them how it's done first. Santa is a very hands-on boss. You also get two more infusions. Cloak of Elvenkind will give you advantage on your stealth checks, and other creatures disadvantage on checks to see you. That's like super advantage. And the ultimate winter coat for a serial anti-burglar. Spell refueling ring lets you recover a spell slot of third level or lower once per long rest. For now, just use it for a second level slot, but get things as big as you can later. Santa's all about that big stuff. Seventh level artificers get flash of genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to a skill check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. It's kind of a shame yours is so low at the moment. What's the deal with that? Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement, and no, I don't want to invest in your intelligence. I want to invest in your dexterity. This will work out best in the long term. If you're going to be giving everyone in the world presents in the same night, you're going to need to spend the other 364 days planning logistics. That's what these levels are for. Ninth level battlesmiths get arcane jolt, letting your steel defender deal extra damage with their attack or heal a creature when they make an attack. Attacking isn't something Donner should do. Not after you fixed his core programming. That was a dark set of days in the North Pole. So much bloodshed. Sorry, I forgot we're not supposed to talk about that. You also get third level spells like fly, which is much better for helping reindeer fly, giving a creature a flying speed for 10 minutes of 60 feet. Haste will make them go faster if they can fly another way, doubling their movement speed, giving them plus two to their AC, advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make an attack. Pairing the dash with the extra speed should let you run around the world. Maybe. It only lasts a minute, and after that you need to give your deer a round off of actions and reactions. Tiny Servant will make you another Tiny Servant for you. Again, stat blocks in the books, look them up, but mix this with your battle buddy and homunculus servant, and you're a one-man party. Tenth of Artificers are magical item adepts, letting you tune up to four magical items at once and just in time for two more infusions. Headband of Intellect is going to fix up our biggest issue, raising your intelligence to 19. Boots of the Winterlands give you resistance to cold damage, you can ignore difficult terrain created by snow or ice, and you don't have to worry about any of the temperatures possible on Earth. They are literally cool boots. 11th level artificers get spell storing item, letting you store an item of second level or lower in an object, then creatures can cast a spell through that item an amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus. What's more, they're the ones who are concentrating on it, so you'll have eight uses of a spell in there, perhaps eight castings of levitate for all of your reindeer, except Rudolph, he pulls his own weight. 12th level artificers get another ability score improvement, bump up your charisma for a lovable belly that jiggles like a bowl full of jelly. 13th level artificers get fourth level spells, fabricate turns some raw materials into an object. If it's organic material like plants, it can be large or smaller. If it's mineral, it has to be medium or smaller, so you can make a toy that fits into a five-foot cube, really showing your workers how it's done. It's much easier to respect your boss when you can see them doing work too. Freedom of movement stops a creature from being slowed down, restrained, or paralyzed, and they can break out of non-magical shackles with five feet of movement. You can't have anybody slowing you down on the big night. 14th level artificers are magical item savants, letting you attune up to five magical items at once, and you get two more infusions. The belt of hill giant strength will set your strength to 21, and the amulet of health will set your constitution to 19. If you wanted to fight, you'd be amazing at it. But I love the idea of a character that's this incredibly broken, who just wants to make toys and keep people happy. We are power building kindness today. 15th level battlesmiths get improved. Defender, raising your defender's AC, boosting its healing and damage with arcane jolt, and dealing a bit of damage when it deflects an attack as well. Hopefully nobody tries to shoot you, but at least now, they're gonna fail. 16th level artificers get another ability score improvement or a feat. We'll go for the skill expert feat, raising your wisdom by one, giving you proficiency with a new skill like perception, and expertise in a skill like insight. Now you really know if people have been bad or good. 17th level artificers can learn 5th level spells, and there's a lot of Santa options here. Creation instantly makes an object that fits into a 5 foot cube, lasts for 24 hours if it's made of plants, 12 hours if it's made of stone, 1 hour if it's made of metal, 10 minutes if it's made of gems, or 1 minute if it's made out of andamantine or mithril. Don't give any of these toys to kids, they'll be really sad when the stuff disappears. Just use it to make useful stuff on your trip, I'd imagine a panini press could be useful. Animate objects bring some toys to life, but not like Skylanders. Instead, it's just a bunch of fun, tiny flying creatures. A huge creature. Again, your helpers are all in the books. Explaining their stats takes forever. Just know that you can command them with your bonus action. And finally, skill empowerment gives a creature expertise in a skill they are proficient with for an hour, depending on your concentration, helping you do a little bit better with whatever you need to, or inspire your reindeer to pull that sleigh. 18th level artificers are magical item masters, letting you attune up to six magical items at once, and you can grab two more infusions. Ring of Protection gives you plus one to your AC and saving throws with your redundant 
Redonkulous stats, that means that pretty much every saving throw will pass. Gloves of Swimming and Climbing give you a climbing and swimming speed equal to your normal speed, and you can add plus five to any athletics check made to climb or swim. Mostly, this will scoot up a chimney, but if for some reason you drop into an ocean, it could be nice there as well. 19th level artificers get our last ability score improvement. Let's get that wisdom up to plus four, so all of your stats are at least plus four after all of your infusions. That's going to pair really well with the capstone to artificer, Soul of Artifice, letting you add plus one to your saving throws for every magical item you're attuned to, which is plus six at this point, and when you hit zero HP, you can blow up one of your toys to hit one HP instead. That sounds kinda good. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have plus four in all but one stat, and in that stat, you have plus five. No matter what skill check shows up, you're pretty good at it, but the real power is saving throws. Thanks to Soul of Artifice, you effectively have proficiency with all saving throws, which means plus 16 intelligence and constitution, plus 11 to strength, and plus 10 to everything else. Finally, you have spells to get a lot of assistance, meaning that you don't have to carry the bag all by yourself. For weaknesses, we didn't focus on damage at all. That doesn't really stop you from dealing damage though. I just didn't talk about spells that you get that deal damage. You also have a lot of concentration spells, though one concentration spell of second level can be cast by your friends instead, so you're actually better at concentrating than most other casters. Finally, you're dependent on your infusion, which could put a target on your back and leave people killing you to steal your suit and get the powers of Santa? That'd be a really weird piece of lore if someone could just murder you and steal your magical items for powers. If it's not clear, this is power building for kindness. Santa is good at everything. He's just not meant to be on the front lines. For that, we're going to need someone who can really rein it in, dear. They'll light up your life. I knows where this is going. It behooves me to make all of these puns. The wordplay really slays me, but delaying the video any longer would be Rudolph me. It's Rudolph. That's part two. Hey, look at the beat. Look at the beat. Hey, Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a very shiny nose. Seriously, if you ever saw it, you might even say that it uh, shines. Next, we need to take the reins of leadership. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call you names. Used to. Finally, we'll be pretty fly for a deer guy with the ability to take to the skies. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Strength will be number one. You really slay it up there in front of the, um, the car thing? It's not a chariot, what's the word? Charisma next, everyone's following your lead and it will help you get violent later. Constitution after that, you run all night and you start in the North Pole. That means toughness and cold resistance. Follow it up with dexterity, you don't wear armor so you might need this in hostile airspace. Wisdom is a bit low, your vision doesn't have to be good when you can just have a flashlight permanently affixed to your face. We'll drop intelligence though, you're not learning the tinkering, you're learning fly forward. Rudolph is a variant human, so variant that he has hooves and trouble climbing ladders. We'll call him a centaur. That'll give you 40 feet of movement speed right away way, an equine build so that you can help pull some weight, doubling your carrying, lifting, dragging, and smashing capacity, but climbing costs you four times the movement instead of double. Don't worry, we're going to be flying anyway. You can charge to make a bonus action attack after you've moved 30 feet in one direction, but you have to use your hooves, which are natural weapons that deal 1d4 plus your strength modifier in bludgeoning damage. Santa's helpers don't get violent, but deer kill more people every year than sharks. I guess that shouldn't be a surprise. Why would a deer try to kill a shark? You get survival for free, I'm choosing that instead of animal hand handling from the centaur list because you'll use persuasion on your fellow deer and they have sentience and souls. We'll take the athlete background for athletics and acrobatics. You didn't get to join in the reindeer games, but there was still a lot of PE classes. We'll kick things off as a sorcerer. You were born with your nose, you didn't study it. Imagine burying that beautiful nose in a book. Grab insight and persuasion for your skill of choice to understand why you were bullied and to get people to stop. If you're themed around Christmas and are born in a barn and shoot lasers and fly around, play a holy soul. They call them divine soul sorcerer in the book, but that's a misprint. You're favored by the gods, letting you add 2d4 to a failed attack roll or saving throw, either trampling the non-festive or avoiding missiles from flying over US airspace. You also get spells and cantrips, and holy solis can grab spells from the cleric list, like sacred flame, forcing a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing a d8 of radiant damage as you blast their eyes with your nose. Light makes a light, so you can see in the dark with your bad centaur eyes. Word of Radiance forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within 5 feet of you, dealing 1d6 radiant damage to those that fail, open up that nose visor and blast anyone who gets too close to the sleigh. Guidance gives a creature a d4 to add to their ability checks, helping you lead the team from the front. Of course, speed needs to be priority number one, so grab Longstrider to bump a creature's movement speed by 10 feet for an hour. It's not a complicated spell. Featherfall stops up to 5 falling creatures from taking falling damage as a reaction. I'm pretty sure it's 
an OSHA violation if nobody has this in the sky. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic full of sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots for more parachutes of speediness. For this level spell, jump triples a creature's jump distance. I know jumping isn't flying, but with your substantial strength score, it should help you get started at the early levels. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment your spells with sorcery points. Extended spell doubles the spell's duration, which will get much more important later when we get something to go really, really fast. Twin spell lets you cast a spell on two creatures that would normally target one creature and takes an action to cast, which will be used when we want to go fast. We've got to go fast. Go, go fast. You also get to learn second level spells. I don't want second level spells. I want sanctuary, which protects a creature, forcing anyone who's trying to attack them to make a wisdom saving throw. Failing that, they have to hit someone else. Now, you just don't have to get shot at. Isn't that nice? They'll just shoot Blitzen. Blitzen's a jerk. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement. We'll bump up our strength and constitution scores since they're odd and odd numbers are all on the naughty list. For this level spell, shield adds five to your AC as a reaction. I'm not proud of how often I keep referencing governments shooting at Santa, but that's pretty standard Santa bit by now. We're gonna do a modern Christmas movie is always followed by the thought, well, wouldn't the US military industrial complex and castle doctrine culture almost guarantee he gets shot? I'm not saying it's inaccurate, but it's just really bleak for family movies. Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells like fly, which lets you fly 60 feet per round uh, for 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. You can bump that up with long strider too for 70 feet per round. That's less sad than the, than the, you know, than the government stuff. Sixth level divine soul sorcerers get an ability called empowered healing, which works better when you grab the healing spell. Daylight is much more important for you, creating a 60 foot radius of bright light. It's the ultimate tool to guide the sleigh at night or last night. Dang, I probably should have done this on a foggy Christmas Eve. This video is like giving someone Christmas ornaments for Christmas. Hooray, I can use this in a full year if I don't forget they're in the closet. Thanks. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells like freedom of movement, making a creature immune to effects that would slow them down, paralyze them, or restrain them. You can even break out of non-magical shackles with five of movement rain sleet snow wind i'm pretty sure you'll encounter all of that if you're flying to every house in the world in one night eighth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement cap off the strength for maximum dragging potential in DD. that's why they call it dungeons and dragon for this level spell haste doubles a creature's movement speed gives them plus two to their ac advantage on dexterity saves and an extra action to dash disengage hide use an object or make one attack obviously it's concentration so you can't have it up at the same time as fly i just wish we got a flying speed later when the spell ends you'll have to take a off of actions and reactions i'm pretty sure boxing day is a reindeer's favorite holiday ninth level sorcerers can learn fifth level spells dawn creates a 30 foot radius 40 foot high cylinder of light that forces a constitution saving throw on creatures inside dealing 4d 10 radiant damage to those that fail half as much to those that succeed rudolph is an adept user of hamon and if you haven't read the manga yet then you wouldn't know Sorry if you're a fake Christmas fan. 10th level sorcerers get another meta magic option we don't really need anymore. Quicken spell lets you cast a spell as a bonus action that normally takes an action, so you can add some quickness to your quickness and go faster even faster. For this level spell, skill empowerment lets a creature double their proficiency bonus for a skill they're already proficient with. Athletics is great for making sure that everyone is pulling their weight. I'm not making fun of Santa's weight. The sleigh is obviously heavier. Like, he's a big guy, but that's, that's, that's steel. 11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells. Sunbeam will let you really roast some chestnuts forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot line dealing 6d8 radiant damage to those that fail and blinding them for a round half damage and no blinding if they succeed this is concentration again but if someone's messing with the team make some quick work of them and get back in the air 12th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement bump up your charisma so your nose will be even brighter 13th level sorcerers can learn 7th level spells and if you really need to travel fast i recommend using teleport that'll bring you and eight willing creatures to a place you know about the more familiar you are with the location the more likely you are to end up where you want to go. Bring Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Santa. Blitzen has to stay home. They know what they did. 14th level divine soul sorcerers get angelic form, letting you give yourself a flying speed without concentration. That means you can pop long strider and haste for a base 100 foot flying speed and an extra dash action for some serious zoom. 15th level sorcerers get 8th level spells. Sunburst is the ultimate laser attack, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot radius, dealing 12d6 radiant damage to those that fell and blinding them for a minute. You're not just Santa's best reindeer, you're also his strongest soldier in the war against darkness. I guess I'm putting some Kingdom Hearts in here as if I haven't done enough Kingdom Hearts this month already. 16th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. Keep pushing your charisma to inspire the team to do their best. Obviously, we couldn't invest in this early. You got bullied pretty hard as a kid. 17th level sorcerers get 9th level spells, one of which will give you the speed to make it to every house in the world in one night. Wish is the only thing that can do that, because it can do anything. If it's not an effect of a spell of 8th level or lower, there are some serious consequences and recovery time, but you got 
364 days, I wouldn't be too worried unless you hit the one in three chance that you can never cast wish again. That might be bad, but you're probably only wishing for a movement speed of 1.3 million feet per round for you and your entire party. Why would your DM punish you for that? 18th level Divine Soul Sorcerers get Unearthly Recovery, letting you heal half your HP as a bonus action as long as you have half your HP left or less, helping you stay up all night even if someone's trying to turn you into taxidermy. 19th level Sorcerers get our last ability score improvement. Capping off your Charisma modifier will be the best idea. It's honestly probably a better idea to do that early, but I'm taking this Rudolph build very seriously, so I have to stay in character. Our capstone is the 20th level of Sorcerer for Sorceress Restoration, giving you four sorcery points on a short rest. It's kind of bad, but the sorcery points give you more and more uses of extended spell to keep on hasting longer, so that's kind of important. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can put the team on your back, literally, with a massive strength score, flying speed, and extra speed to bring people where they need to go. You've also got a bunch of radiant damage, so Rudolph would be great at fighting undead. Finally, you've got ways to spread the buffs around, making the whole team stronger. For weaknesses, you're dependent on radiant damage for damage, so if you end up fighting an angel, things could be rough. I don't see that happening, to be honest. You've also got a lot of concentration spells. You're not bad at concentration, but you can only have one up at a time. Finally, sorcerer hit die are not your friend, no matter what they tell you. Even with plus two constitution, you're not going to have a lot of health. So it's a good thing that your boss is the arbiter of kindness, and perhaps the most powerful being to ever exist. Whether you want to spread the Christmas cheer yourself, or just give that jolly old soul a lift, I hope y'all have a happy holidays and a merry new year. Also, I'm still not done with bonus videos, so come back tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. It's the best present I could ask for. Other than you joining the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, or subbing to Tulak and Engo for more Tulak fun. All of those would be great. Thanks.